Hey everyone, you're watching Ash on Comics. I'm Ash, and I don't have any comics today. Today is uh, Wednesday, August 29th, and it's normally my comics pool list. And my In-N-Out comics pool list, where I get to get my double double in my comics. Today, I'm brown bagging it. Wah, wah. Why is that, you might ask, if any one of you might care? It's because no comics came out that are worth buying. At least for me. There's probably a couple decent things. Um, I know like the new Exo Man of War came out and I kind of wish I was buying that. But it's just one of the ones that didn't make it in my budget. So uh, I looked around, thought of like, what should I buy? Maybe I can uh, pick up something extra. And there's a couple of the Looney Tunes books that came out. Um, there's like a Joker Daffy... Harley Quinn, Gossamer, Lex Luthor, Porky Pig. Looks like they're doing like the villain crossovers this time. And the, the Daffy Joker one is a potential. Um, I didn't want to drive all the way down the comic book store just, just for that. Um, Brett Booth is doing the art. He's a pretty good artist. I think Daffy and Joker is kind of an interesting combination. Eh, if I've got nothing else to buy, maybe... Um, the alternate art cover looks pretty cool as well, and I don't know if there will be any. I'll, I'm going to wait till next week, I think, if, if there's any available next week with the alternate cover. Maybe that'll be a sign. But, yeah. So, there's no reason to drive all the way down to the comic book store for just seeing if there was an odd issue on the shelf or something that caught my eye. So, I didn't. And since I wasn't going to the comic book store, I was like, well, I'll just... Uh, skip the in and out today and it'll be like this week never happened but i do my try to do my pull list videos every week um i missed one week but i didn't actually miss it i actually just posted it to the wrong channel and then i deleted the video and so i was like yeah well whatever it's been a couple weeks i'm not gonna redo it all so yeah you can stare at this lovely brown bag which uh actually is gonna have a really good sandwich and i make killer sandwiches and um to go off a little bit of marvel uh lifestyle brand here if uh if you like sandwiches there's a bread dave's killer bread holy shit um they have one that's called like best best white bread ever or something like that and it is freaking phenomenal um I, my got a co-worker recommend it to me and um he was like you're this is, this is gonna change your life type bread i was like whatever dude and uh, so he brought, he, brought, oh, he, didn't, he didn't bring anything. I, I think I actually just finally, he talked me into it. I decided to buy a, a loaf. It's not cheap. It's like five bucks a loaf, but it's worth it. It is so good. If you, if you're the kind of person like me, where when you make a sandwich, you don't just like slap on some meat and put some cheese and you're done. Like I, I load it up. I make, you know, gourmet sandwiches. Um, that, that bread is kind of like the uh, icing on the cake. Anyways, you don't care about hearing about bread. I just, I'm kind of a freak about things, and um, I get excited about things I like. So, in, in lieu of a uh, in and out uh, pull this video, I thought I would talk about something that was on my mind real quick. I'll try not to take much of your time, but on Twitter, people have been talking about DC Comics. You know, Marvel and DC, but DC in particular letting them down. Like Marvel's been letting people down for years. So many people have written Marvel off. It's just not new. You know, it's, it's old news at this point. But DC, I'm starting to see a lot of people go like, F DC. The, the, the big one is with this anus incident. If you don't know, um, a comic is an artist. It's a comics pro. Rod, Robbie Rodriguez sent a picture of his ass uh, over the internet to Ethan Van Skyver and I think maybe some other people. But anyways, it hit the Twitter sphere. I mean, it's it's basically everyone's seen it. It that's that's looked out for it at all, um, and it's pretty just unacceptable. That's just not something professionals do. You know, a, a picture of your ass, like your naked anus, is just it's so uncouth, so unprofessional. Like I I, I can't even describe it. And it's funny because of course you don't have. Um, you don't have anyone in the SJW sphere, any comic pros at all, except Neil Gaiman, when he was questioned about it, he had to be solicited to make a comment. 
<coughs> oh, excuse me for that Zach moment. Holy shit. Um, if Neil Gaiman, he, he kind of was like kind of cornered and like had, you know, didn't have anything. What, what are you going to say? Like, no, I'm okay with anus. Like he, he, he tried to write it off, but he got cornered and he, he admitted it, but he, I don't call that coming out. Right. Like I don't, I don't coming out is like when you, you see like just people going, whoa, whoa, wait a second. That's, that is uncalled for. That is not good. And, and I mentioned this because I wouldn't care. But it's the SAWs always, they are always the first to come to Comicsgate supporters and say, well, why don't you call these people out? If you're against, you need to call it out, make a stand, you know, like, all right, well, but you don't make a stand. See, there's a, that's the difference. They virtue signal. And this incident doesn't help their narrative. In fact, it hurts their narrative. So they just want to sweep it under the rug. They don't actually care about principle. They don't, the things that they, they're outraged about, they actually don't care about that. They just see it as this is something that is offended so I can latch on to it and be a victim. So that's what they, they want to do. They want to be victims and they want people that are their enemies to be destroyed. And so they find things to be outraged. It's kind of like in football, the... the Sorry, soccer, the actual, you know, whatever. And you, and you know about, uh, you know, when they, <laughs> the term is slipping my head right now, but when they like fake, you know, like oh, they collide a little bit and they'll like fake the industry or fake you know, injuries and fall down, um, <laughs> you know, because they want the other team to get penalized. So they're like playing it up and over dramatizing it. That's what, that's what SJWs do. They're not actually injured. They're not actually hurt. They're just trying to get people in trouble. They're trying to get their enemies ruined. And so this anus incident is, it's, doesn't help them at all. In fact, makes them look bad. And so they just ignore it because they don't actually care about principle. Anyways, so a lot of people now are kind of pissed off at DC because DC, this guy has done work for DC or I guess he's contracting for DC. Oh, that's right. He's actually, that's right. He's doing the art for um, Zoe Quinn's new book of all people, right? So Zoe Quinn, one of the most hated people uh, in geekdom, right? She is just, if, if you don't know Gamers Gate, and I, I, I gotta be honest, I didn't actually know that much about Gamers Gate either. Uh, I knew like the surface levels of it, whatever. Uh, I found a guy who did a video on Gamers Gate. He did this animated kind of semi cartoon piecemeal thing, and I started watching it. And at first, I was like, this doesn't seem right. But I stuck with it and watched it through the end, and I was like, wow, this is actually very two-sided. It felt like it was going to be one-sided, and that's why I was like, not right. And I was like, ah, oh, this feels very slanted. But then after, you know, partway through the video, he covers the, the other side like, and gets all angles of it, and then finally comes to the conclusion, which I thought was pretty right on. And I was like, wow, that was pretty enlightening. And so that led me to do a little bit more research about what's going on. And yeah, it's just what happened in Gamersgate is, is terrible. Um, but the big thing about Gamersgate is the same thing that Comicsgate has, and it's really just about professionals treating their fans like a-holes. And that is what Gamersgate ultimately boils down to. There's a lot of catalysts, but it ultimately boils down to gamers being like, whoa, whoa, I don't need EA telling me that I'm a racist bigot. That, that's not what I need. You know, that people get pissed off when they're not racist bigots. And they've been spending hard-earned money, lots of money, video games, lots of money. And then the company goes, screw you, racist bigot, we don't need you. Like, it just, you have a reason to be pissed off. If you're a fan, you're a customer that is not tolerable. That's the same thing happening in Comicsgate. You're spending money. Oh, man, I was in the comic store last week. The guy in front of me making his purchase, he, um, he literally was like buying a box. And he made this comment, he's like, I just need to buy one of these every week. The short boxes. And I was like, damn. And he had a stack. Literally, I think, really honestly, it may have been just over half of a short box. That's how much one week's purchase was. And when so SJW say things like, oh, man, dude, we don't need people. Dude, this guy is keeping stores afloat by himself. This is what we call a whale. Like, they don't understand comics buyers and people 
who are now, you know, middle age or whatever, make good money. They have a lot of money to spend. They can literally afford hundreds of dollars a week to toss at a hobby. And this guy was buying, like, I was like, man, do you even have time to read all these books? And he was like, well, you know, a lot of these are like variant covers and stuff. He was showing me he had like five variant covers of like one of the new Marvel books or something. I was like, good Lord. So he's like, yeah, it's not as, quite as hard to read. But here we go. This guy is buying all those covers. Like, this, you know, and I, I don't disparage the guy. I, I There was a time where I was, a, you know, a speculator and I bought stuff to click. It's, just, it's what he does for fun. And he pays this money, it goes to the industry, but you know what? Someone, if Marvel go, some Marvel person comes out and says, hey, fuck you, you bigot, we don't need your money. I'm telling you, that guy stops in an in I mean, he's not seeing that. He's probably not on Twitter. He's probably not, he's just what we call like just a regular fan who's more insulated from the shit that's going on. Uh, yeah. So I'm pretty long-winded, and I apologize for that, but I'm getting back to this DC issue that I want to talk about. So I see online and Twitter, people are like, oh, screw DC, because they're not, according to their opinions, responding well enough to this Robbie Rodriguez issue. To which my feeling on the thought is like, look, I think DC should do something. But I also think DC shouldn't just do something instantly. This is something that you should mull over, right? This is something HR sits, discusses, how are we going to approach it? DC needs a, a proper strategy. They shouldn't just go off half cock like like Disney and fire James Gunn, right? I mean, I think that was probably the right thing to do. The way they went about doing it was was probably not, you know, it was it feel it felt really half cocked. So this Robbie Rodriguez thing, I don't know. I think that they probably want to quietly deal with it. I don't know honestly what they are, want to do. I don't know if they'll do anything. And I can understand why people are upset that DC's not doing anything because that's not that's not acceptable behavior. That's absolutely, I don't care if you're a, you know, Neil Gaiman tried to, to throw it off and say, well, he's a subcontractor, he's not really an employee. It doesn't matter. A subcontractor is, in a sense, just like an employee. You're still working for the company. Do you want to hire? Do you want to subcontract people that do that? Like, he's drawing your books. His name is credited in the books you publish. That's just not something you want to associate yourself with. And there's no need because there's tons of other artists out there that are probably more qualified that are looking for work. We're not in it, we're not in an odds, you know, an issue here where it's like, oh, there's just you can't find artists, we gotta do whatever we can. You know? And it's this stupid new Vertigo book from Zoe Quinn, which is gonna be an absolute freaking failure. The only people who are gonna buy it are initially all the Zoe Quinn supporters who are just duped into thinking that she's some sort of, I don't know, paragon of SJWism and the Me Too movement and all this stuff. She's, she's a total fraud. Oh, man. You want to know more about comic Gamergate and Zoe Quinn? It's not just Gamergate. Look up uh, Candace Owens and the issue that happened with her and how she's linked with Candace Owens. And essentially... Zoe Quinn is the reason Candace Owens exists today. Candace Owens was just trying to do this entrepreneurial thing. Zoe Quinn interfered and sort of red-pilled Candace Owens. And it's really kind of funny that now Candace Owens is one of the most influential black voices out there reaching out to the black community and opening their minds to what's going on. And it's just, it's really kind of funny when you see that. But... Uh, so people are wanting to, you know, oh, screw it, I'm never buying DC again, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? Settle down. This guy is a subcontractor, and I've just said that's not an excuse for DC to, to keep hiring him. But as a, as, as a buyer, it's, it is, there's some merit to that, that he is a subcontractor. He's doing a book that none of us were going to buy anyway, that I'm actually really cool with. I'm really cool with Vertigo being, like, DC's SJW label, like... Oh, we want SJWs. We're going to be ultra hyper diverse and all this stuff. Super woke. It's all Vertigo. And then the rest of us can say, cool, we will not buy Vertigo. We'll just keep buying DC and keep doing DC mainstream comics like, like you always did. Win-win. SJWs get their books. Normies get their books. And it works. I think it's a brilliant idea for DC if they can keep, if they can do it. Looks like they're slipping a little bit by putting Kelly Sue DeConnick on Aquaman and I think it's Gail Simone's getting Wonder Woman, yikes. 
whatever. Um, so don't don't cancel DC because of this. I mean, cancel if if you just hate DC Comics, I guess cancel. I'm a big big '90s Marvel fanboy, and I always had a prejudice against DC. I thought DC was stupid. And I think the 90s, if when you go back in era, all eras of comics, 90s is the most exciting, it's the most fun. Some of the best quality things came out of the late 80s, early 90s. Um, DC is doing stuff today that would stand up in that era. I'm, I'm shocked. I, 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 you know, some people have accused me, like, oh, you're just an old DC fanboy. No, I'm not. I just came on to DC this year. I'm a DC noob. But I want to give credit where credit's due. And DC is doing some good stuff. Now, it may not be the subjective... Re you may not have the same subjective reaction to it as I do. And that's fine. Different comics are going to appeal to different people. But it's quality. They are doing quality stuff. So, to, to drop DC because of a stupid incident... Well, it's Ash, it's not just stupid incident. Look what they're doing with Aquaman and, and Wonder Woman too. Yes, in the history of comic books, the greatest publishers, let's use Marvel in the 90s as an example, still did boneheaded things. Okay? But let's not forget, Marvel law, Marvel had the hottest artist talent in the history of comic books. They were selling record-breaking numbers of titles, millions of issues. The comics industry, they had never been selling more issues than at this time. And Marvel decided to stand, to dig their heels in and say, we're not paying you guys more money. We're not giving you creator-owned rights. We're not, we're not going to give you any more. They were like, nope, we're just keeping everything for ourselves and we're super greedy. Didn't want to negotiate with these guys at all. And the seven hottest guys in the industry said, screw you, we're out, we're starting our own company. And it almost destroyed their company. <coughs> Sorry for the Zach moment again. So, yes, even during the greatest era of comics, com com and I didn't stop buying Marvel. I was pissed off that, you know, Jim Lee was no longer going to be X-Men. And part of that was mitigated because I was excited for Image. I, you know, I, but I didn't hate Marvel. I was now excited. I was going to get Marvel and Image. Like, get your, get your cake and eat it too. Yay. You know, like, so, yeah, it sucks. If you're a Wonder Woman fan, if you're a, even worse, man, if you're an Aquaman fan, I, I fear for this book. You're going to you have every right to be pissed. But that's just the nature of the industry. It just, good things do not go on forever. Chris Claremont eventually had to stop writing X-Men. God, that was a tragic when he was done. But it just that's what happens. But there are other good books. You don't write off a publisher because of a few things. Especially when they're doing good things and they're showing that they're trying to do right. They're paying artists the best probably in, in the industry. They are paying writers the best in the industry. They're using quality publish, you know, the publishing on, you know, good quality paper. Um they, they're not, they are kind of falling for the gimmicks, but they're not doing it the way Marvel does the gimmicks um, with the, the, their issues. Their alternate issues are stores can order any number of copies, you know, whereas Marvel, it's like, oh, you got to order 50 copies of Spider-Man to get this variant, you know, and, 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 and hurting the stores. Um, they... You know, yeah, they're doing things that piss me off too. Canceling a mortal man, some of the way they're treating New Age of Heroes is disappointing. But if you enjoy comics, if you enjoy mainstream comics, DC is your last best hope. Because Marvel is shitting the bed, and it's like, oh, you think they're done? Nope, they're more shit. It, it's just, it is nonstop shitting the bed. And they, they, they'll give you moments of, like, oh, look... Look, they, they killed, you know, Jane Foster and Thor's back. No, no, but, the, but Jane Foster's really not dead. You know, oh, look, they, they're bringing back actual Steve Rogers. No, but he's actually, you know, Captain Antifa. Oh, but, you know, the Avengers is, is pretty good. Yeah, there's been a couple of issues, and it's still pretty cringy. Oh, but Venom, yes, Donnie Cates is a shining star that they're lucked into. But look how many books they're putting him on. I think he's got like six books now. That dude is going to burn out. He's going to become a hack like Bendis. 
I don't care how talented you are, you cannot write that much material and maintain quality. It's not gonna happen. And these Venom books that are coming out were already written and put to be published probably a couple months ago. So we're not gonna, you don't see that's like a delay. You're not gonna see that quality drop instantly. It's gonna take several months down the road. Let's look at the beginning of 2019 and see what Donny Cates is still doing and see if his writing is still up to par. You know, they're gonna they're gonna wreck their one of their best talents. But back to DC. If DC crumbles, the industry crumbles because the industry needs stores. The industry needs people like that whale in front of me in the comic book store last week buying shit tons of comics, and some of them were Marvel. A lot of them were Marvel. Um, and that's that's fine. People want what they want, but Marvel sales are dropping. The industry dropped somewhere between 7 and 10% last year. It's on track to do the same this year. It cannot handle. Uh, 100, was it fi over 50 stores closed last year? We know just last month over 15 stores closed this year. We're, da we're down to the low 2000s in the number of stores. There's only so much, it as more stores close, the less comics will get sold. It's, it's a symbiotic relationship. Stores need comics, but comics also need stores because more people going into comic book stores throughout the nation equals you know more people buying new comics. Oh, look, there's a new thing comes out I'm interested in. Someone posted something on YouTube. That sounds like a comic I want to try. Great. But that doesn't happen when there's less and less stores. And vice versa, when comics are shittier and shittier and shittier, stores can't sell comics, they go out of business because of stupid practices like Marvel that force these stores to overbuy comics they can't sell and lose money, then they close and it's just it's this vicious cycle. DC is keeping that afloat because DC is actually doing good things. Now you can look, oh, Batman 50, this debacle. DC owned up on that and let stores return Batman 50. And I am a big proponent of this idea that it's it's not the mistake you make, it's how you handle the mistake. And the fact that DC did that, said, look, our bad, we did this, we aren't happy, we're about the stores, we'll take returns on the books. Fantastic. Now it's DC's loss, not the stores. Um, and that's the way you do business, and that made me respect DC a little bit more. And like I said, just... Don't buy DC just because you're to buy DC. Buy DC because there's books out there that you like. And I'm convinced if you like mainstream comics that there are books out there that you like. Red Hood and the Outlaws is, is doing great. Uh, Green Lantern. I hear, I haven't read it, but Vendetti's started a new Hawkman run that sounds um, like it's pretty fantastic. Brian Hill, who did an outstanding run, just uh, finished up on Detective Comics. He's got a new book coming out. Batman and the Outlaws is coming back out. There's, you know, something there to be excited about. So find the things that are out there that are good. I assure you DC is doing good books. Um, some of their new age books are still good. I keep reviewing them. I will keep being a proponent of the good stuff that's out there. Just think about that. Think about how if we lose DC, <laughs> we lose everything. It just goes into the world of image goofy indies and ordering stuff online and 3,000 copy print runs where no quality artists or writers can afford to work under so they have to go seek other you know other ways of employment writers are going to go with you know book writing artists will go do you know other types of uh, art commercial art or what ha what have you and it'll just be the tumblr crowd working on peanuts selling their books online, it'll be terrible uh, for all of us. So think about that. Sorry that this video, this is a pull list video that's 25 minutes long and there's nothing to show on a poll. So that wasn't my intention, but it was an opportunity to sit here and talk into the camera and uh, look at a brown bag and share an idea with you. And if you tuned out a while ago, well, you're not hearing this right now. And if you stuck with me, thanks for hearing. Um, I I'm, I'm always want to hear your feedback down in the comments somewhere around there. Um, I try to respond to every comment I get. 
unless it's just a comment that doesn't seem like it needs a response. Um, I do appreciate everyone who takes their time to listen to what I have to say. Uh, again, what I say is not coming at you from an expert standpoint at all. It's just coming at you as a fellow fan who wants to just express themselves. Um, and I want to hear you express yourself too. Um, that's one of the things I love about comics is the community and hearing what other people think, especially even if I don't agree. And um, it's how I've come to, it's how I came to DC. You know, I would have never come to DC if I didn't open my mind to other people's opinions about a comic company I was prejudiced against. So anyways, thanks for listening. I'll see you on the next video.